Fair warning right now, spoiler chat coming. Just, if you have not played Spider-Man 2 and you don't want to be spoiled about anything, get out of here now. Come back later after you've played the game. We here at Direct Gaming need to talk about this game. All three of us, myself, Bobby, and Lethal, who are joining me here today, we have all gotten the platinum for Spider-Man 2, which is not really that hard, but regardless, we have all gotten it. We have all played through the game at least twice for most of us. And we want, to just, we want to talk about this game. There's a lot to talk about, whether it's about this game, comparing it to the first game, some of the side missions, some of those characters that are definitely being teased for any upcoming sequel, not to mention what some of the developers have come out and said about some of the characters going forward and everything. Regardless, we got a lot to talk about here. So, like I said before, all three of us are here. We're ready to talk. Let's get started. All right, obviously, we all absolutely loved Spider-Man 2. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the other two talk because otherwise I'm going to be just talking over them the entire time. So let's start this time with Lethal. Lethal, how did you enjoy Spider-Man 2? Was it an okay game? Was it just average or was it amazing? Guys, if I can give this a grade, it would be a five out of five game. This <laughs> this game was, I, oh, I almost cussed, but this game was amazing. This this game was quite literally amazing. For anybody who's saying that it wasn't amazing, you're a liar and you're just a hater and you're probably an Xbox fanboy. But this game was freaking fantastic. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, I love the main story. Some people have mentioned they had some pacing issues with it. I surely didn't. I absolutely love being able to switch between Miles and Peter. I thought that was freaking awesome. And then just the combo, and I mean combo, wow, but the combat, and I feel like it was like just a good amount of refinement and some cool new additions to it that I freaking loved. Um, I mean, the, the uh, what's it called? The implementation of, uh, was it the, the, oh my God, is it the web gliders? No, the web wings. I think it's the web, web, wing, wings. web wings. Yeah, I, I don't know why I was say gliders, but the web wings, freaking amazing. I mean, I don't know how much we want to go personally, but I mean, overall this, the whole thing was fantastic. This is to me like the ideal sequel, even though you can kind of argue that, you know, Miles Morales was kind of a sequel, but I mean, however they wanted to go ahead and go about this, they named this part two. And so like, this is part two. But for me, this was like, this is my favorite Spider-Man game to date. I like, there's some people who like the first one more. I like this one more. And I just, I think it's just because I really did enjoy the fact that you got to go between Miles and Peter. And I just thought that the way they did it was just not only just seamless and just cool, but just how it um, worked with the story and everything, I thought was just so cool. But also like even in combat, being able to just like fight as Peter and then like Miles shows up. I mean, they do that in other ways too, which again, I don't want to keep going and just going on and going on. But I mean, literally everything about this game to me was like so well done, so freaking perfect. I could gush about even the side quests, even though not all of them were fantastic. I don't care. They were still like majority were just freaking amazing. I got to stop talking it's more Spider-Man. It's more Spider-Man. It, it's, it's more Spider-Man, but I mean, it's goddamn good. More Spider-Man, if that makes sense. A five out of five, more good. Goddamn more. Goddamn good. Spider-Man. What about you, Bobby? What are your personal thoughts? Was it just average? Was it spectacular? Um, I, I loved it. Um, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Uh, you know, just I've always loved Spider-Man. And I remember... You know, I was talking to Chin about it. I was like, Chin, I'm, I'm happy to see that you're Spider. He's like, I, I like Spider-Man back in like second grade. I was like, okay, all right, that's fair, right? But I was like, you know, by that point, I didn't live with them anymore, right? I was like 18, so I was out of the house. But I was like, you know, Chin, like I was driving to get Marvel cards and comic books, you know, on my bike before you were born, right? So like we were talking Spider-Man, how much we both love it, right? And we were just talking about the game and how how great it was because he absolutely adored it too. He went right through the story and then he went to ultimate mode. Um, I loved the story. I thought it was great. There was like some twists and turns that I did not see coming. Uh, I did figure out who Venom was just before the game because I was like, it has to be. That's the thing that makes sense. I thought maybe they'll throw, you know, like a curveball somewhere. Um, but yeah. there were some really cool story curveballs that I did not see coming and that I absolutely loved. Right. So, well, I mean, we'll talk more about the story overall. Um, it, it's like the combat was great. The traversal was insane. Although I still stand by that. If you just learn how to web swing the right way, that is literally still by far the fastest way to get around. Even with all like the, the lawn, the zip launching and slingshots and web wings. It's like, yeah, if you could just find like, you know, maybe if you're if you have to go over the water to get somewhere like you have to use the web wings. But outside of that, you can literally just swing and it's it's like 30% faster if you know how to swing right. And you're a nerd like me who uses the game physics that way. Um, but I yeah, I just loved it. I thought the story was really great. The one thing I will say is the story doesn't hit 
the same emotional gut punch like the ending of the first one. It was very good, and it was an emotional gut punch. I would say like on a scale of like eight, right? Mm -hmm. But the ending of the of Spider Man PS4 is just like that is like the most massive gut punch, like ten out of ten. You you feel ways after that game, right? I this one, that, yeah. while it, while it was very very good, that would be the only thing I would say. I actually like the overall story a lot more. Yeah. But that that emotional like ending was not as strong in my opinion. Yeah, but. I would I would say for me personally, like again, again absolutely amazing game. Um, I feel like the overall story in two here flowed better. I would say in terms from piece to piece, I felt like in the yeah. first game there was like these it felt like these random stops essentially. It was just like oh okay, so I have to do this to continue on or whatever. Whereas in this game, you really didn't have to do that aside from like a, a couple of them, but. Overall, I felt like it flowed a little bit better. The ending was definitely bombastic and crazy, which is what they were clearly going for and everything. And, you know, obviously people are going to have their own opinions on, oh, I prefer the first one ending, or I prefer the second one, or I prefer the third act of the, the first game, or the third act of the second, and what, you know, everyone's going to have their own personal preference, which is perfectly fine. I found it a little weird, though, how some people were like, oh, the combat's not changed enough, or this game's not changed enough and everything. And I'm like, didn't we just have this debate with God of War to Ragnarok? Like, it's an improvement over what came before it. It was not going to be this huge, dramatically changed game that reinvents the wheel and does all this stuff. I'm like, we knew going into this. You should know going into this type of game what it's going to be. They took everything from the first game and improved upon it. Everything from the web slinging to the combat to everything. Like... It's, what were you expecting? It's a sequel. You know, so. It's a sequel. Yeah, so for anybody sequel. confused, like, it's a sequel. If you know what a sequel is, and you know, there yeah, should yeah. not be any if confusion. Yeah, yeah. If you've played a game it's sequel not reboots, before. It's, 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 yeah, I, I just, I, anytime I saw those comments, I'm just like, oh, are you guys serious right now? Like, come on. Like, yes, there are easily things that you can critique about the game. Absolutely, 100%. We all have them. But to say that, I'm just like, Why? Uh, on the topic of that, one of the things that I did notice was people like just pointing out weird bugs and like maybe it's just me. Like I had I had I think I, you know, I've got we got the platinum, right? It took me like 30, 35 hours or something. I think so. Yeah, Because I was I was just like vibing, just playing the game, right? Having fun. Um, But like I did that and I'm seeing all these crazy like glitches of like people clipping through and turning into a cube and all that. And I'm like, oh, it's during the cube couple... thing. It was a weird. I was just like, how the heck did you get I did, that? I did see that one. That was interesting. Yeah, I saw that. But like, I never experienced any of that stuff, right? I had a couple crashes and I was like, okay, that's kind of frustrating. I definitely understand why the game was dinged a few points, right? Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Uh, that's enough, perfect. Yeah, and, even, that's yeah, perfect and even the, there's even some design stuff. But then like, I saw some other people go like, oh yeah, apparently like, what people are doing to get these these bugs of like people glitching through a wall or something is they're using photo mode and rotating while they're close so it like photo mode doesn't establish those boundaries so it clips and I'm like what yeah and that yeah, that's, that's, that's disappointing that's on them yeah, that's, uh, you know it's just I like disappointing because it doesn't surprise me that that's the state of the landscape now but people doing that is so stupid it's it's weird like look we I know all like all three of us have ragged on like Microsoft at Xbox right but I've always been the first person to say like I want Microsoft to do good and all they have to do is put out good stuff and they fail at that like repeatedly and it's not that they like, like not necessarily everything is bad right not everything is Redfall Redfall is lethal still I have no idea how you finish that <laughs> hey right. <laughs> But like Starfield, like people were trying to do the same thing with the bugs. And I'm like, yeah, there's some stuff that happens. that's like dumb Bethesda stuff, right? My favorite was every time I got off an elevator, if I had what's her name, the the blonde Sarah, right? It was her name, uh, the companion. Like she would just like sprint, mm -hmm. dead sprint, like down a hall. Like, and it was so <laughs> funny and I loved it. Like, and, like, I didn't really knock it. I was like, that's just so dumb and stupid. It's funny. Like, I was fine with that. That's one of those things like Bethesda games, you you laugh. But you had people doing the same thing who are PlayStation fans. It's like, guys, like, just just play the games. And if you play don't the like the games or you don't like Microsoft or you don't like PlayStation, just that's ignore fine. the game. Yeah, just ignore like, it. Just move or, on. Or if, you, if you're like stuff. us and you have to play them to talk about them, you know, give your honest critique. Right? And, and then and, move on. And move, move on. on. That. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, it's it's wild to like to see uh, how polished this game did come out, right? Game Considering, was, yeah. yeah, 
it was extremely polished, which I definitely really, you know, in a year where, you know, years, I should say, where certain games will come out and they're glitchy as hell and things aren't finished and everything. It was nice to have a completed game and everything. You know, uh, again, I had one crash myself personally, which hey, it's annoying. It happens, though. Yeah. Um, but the overall like presentation and the game made and everything like it just it, it all works it works the way it's supposed to right yeah. and i'm not trying to say that you know that one crash is like you know i can just ex you know excuse every single crash from here on out and everything like that the reason i can excuse a small crash on a spider-man game like this compared to you know the five crashes that i got in less than 10 minutes on jedi survivor i kid you not on that by the way because this one little area would not let me go yeah i'm gonna ding them for that that is 100 yeah. uh you know a good critique but you know a you know a thing where you know they just they didn't see it in their playtest and everything maybe because i was just going too fast or doing something weird and it just crashed it's like okay you know annoying i simply boot the game back up and i never had another crash after that never so you know i can easily overlook that real quick which i think a lot of people don't see the difference sometimes so that's where i personally see the difference where i'm just like yeah one crash here, fine, but five, six crashes in a row in less than 10 minutes? Yeah, no, I'm going to yeah. ding you on that, 100%. 100%, yeah. But I want to know your guys' personal thoughts on, so we're, again, I know we said at the very beginning, spoilers and everything, yeah. what are your personal thoughts on everything when it comes to, you know, seeing Venom for the first time with his voice and everything, to playing as Venom, dude, that boss fight against Craven, well, not hard by any means or anything, a brutal scene with the head Hell oh yeah. my gosh that yeah. was like that is pure venom right there that was pure venom i was like yes yes 100 percent yes i'm all here for it and everything you know i'm not gonna lie though i will say just totally off topic there was a part of me that originally thought that maybe just maybe craven was gonna be hunter or craven was going to be venom i thought that too. just just, just be, i thought that, that, just, for that some reason, did it especially for when sure, you find yeah. out he has cancer and everything i was just like is there a chance potentially, you know, heal the world? But then obviously the whole line of we're going to heal the world and obviously it's hairy and everything. So, you know, but overall, I I enjoyed the story from start to finish. I really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, the performances by all the actors, especially Spider-Man slash Peter. Absolutely amazing. Top tier. Absolutely top tier. Oh, yeah. Like the story to me, I thought it was really well structured. Um, I did hear people say like, "Oh, there's pacing issues," and I was like, "Really? Yeah." Like I didn't I, feel I like it too. did at all. I, I didn't feel that either. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I didn't hear that a bunch, but I heard a few people saying that, and I was like, "Maybe you're being nitpicky." Like, because yeah, because to, to me, <laughs> yeah, I felt like I felt like the story was paced perfectly fine, and um, you know, you see the the transformation. A, a lot of people too, and this is one of those things that like 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 media literacy is dead, right? Where I'm sure you guys have heard that. Where like I saw so many people go like, oh well, like Venom just turns into this like rage monster at the end, and like all of a sudden like Harry hates Peter, and I'm like, well, like That's you know, what? you see that they're super set on working together, and then. Peter almost dies, and then Harry saves him by giving him the suit, which starts to kill Harry. Then Peter in the suit that, you know, he gave him to keep him alive uh, destroys the whole lab, right. and then he won't give the suit back, and then he's hanging out with Miles, right, who Harry's already worried he's getting replaced. In the beginning of the story, you can kind of see that. Um, you even hear, you know, when he finds out, when Harry finds out, like, Peter is Spider-Man, you know, when Harry shows up with the, the suit on the roller coaster, like trying to save the, the thing at Coney Island and Harry's like, Pete, you know, like he figures out he's uh, Spider-Man and he goes, oh, so you told Mary Jane, but you didn't tell me like that's that's cool, man. You know, like and you see that that like that resentment is just very clearly building the entire time. Yeah, right yeah. and and i don't like i don't like, that was one of the criticisms i really was like uh i don't understand you know the criticism here at all and remember like the symbiote just in general amplifies the emotions right like that attachment to negative. that bond and everything yeah, yeah it's, which that's that that's a big point that they were trying to showcase this entire game too right was how like how the symbiote yeah. was really affecting both peter and miles or not miles um peter and um harry, harry. and harry yeah yeah and I, I thought that was i thought it was great like to me, I was like, yeah, it's really good. Another thing is, you know, people are like, oh, the symbiote's supposed to be weak to fire. 
And it's not oh, I, I did see that. There, there was there was that, an interview yeah. on IGN, I believe. Like the game director or one of the game directors came on and they asked a ton of questions and everything. And they said, yeah, no, we at the very beginning, you know, of the game, when you start to see the suit and everything, we basically said that uh, he would be he wouldn't be weak to fire because it's, it's when yeah. Harry jumps into the furnace to save Tombstone yeah. or whatever. Like they just established that that in their universe, which FYI, for anyone who doesn't know comic books and Marvel and multiverse and all that kind of stuff, there are different things that are different in those different universes so obviously the universe that this game takes place in is not the same as you know the comic book 616 or the marvel cinematic universe or the into the spider universe or into the spider verse and movies and everything like that like this is unique to this particular universe and these games so they are allowed to do that there have been other iterations of venom and spider-man and all that kind of stuff that have changed yep. certain things like that and so just to simply say all right, you're not weak to fire because again, that just it makes for you know game development wise, it makes it easier for them and everything like that. Which you know what, fine. In in, in a multiverse of infinite possibilities, fine. This one world, he's not weak to fire. Fine, he's still weak to sound. Sure. I'm sure there'll be other weaknesses if he ever comes back, or you know we gotta deal with. I guess again, spoilers. Uh, we gotta deal with carnage and everything, right? There's gonna be other weaknesses that they're most likely gonna. Use, yeah, which so. to me, like, it's one of those things. Like, like once they establish the rules of this universe, right? Yeah. And then people start complaining. It becomes like I, I turn into Peter Griffin with the like, oh my, oh my god, god, who the hell oh cares? God. Like, who yeah. cares? Yeah. Like, they are telling you the rules of their universe. Yeah. Like, it's fine. So that's okay. Yeah. So things work different and here, it, and, it, and like, it doesn't take away from those other versions of those characters or anything like that. Because again, they are completely completely separate they're in their own little world that's it and and right. if you went up to you know 50 people on the street yeah. and you're like hey do you know venom and you found 50 people who knew venom and he said hey what is venom's weakness the first thing that like 48 of those people are going to say is oh sound sound yeah like because all of the iconic venom moments it like throughout almost all of comic and movie history involve him like with like a loud bell or speaker or something freaking out right yep like oh yeah the the the, ch the whole church bell i mean even from the raimi spider-man days that, that's you know? yeah, that's all that, that's the only reference i have so he yeah, had that one right yeah exactly so, like, i mean yeah, heck, it, even the venom movie i think like he should have died technically with that rocket scene he yeah didn't. he survived didn't, yeah. So guess what? <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's one of those things that's like, you know, get over it. It yeah. sucks. Like different it's like you said, Talon, different comic book universes have different rules. There's a universe uh I remember reading back in the nineties that was like, what if like the symbiote attached to Frank Castle and then it became Venom Punisher and that was like really rad by the way, if you yeah. can find that. Uh but like, yeah. So it's like different things happen in different universes. Insomniac universe is not the main universe. It's a side, like offshoot. Yeah. It's their um, own. It's their own game universe that they've created in the Spider-Man lore and everything, and that's what they're going with. I mean, heck, you go back less than twenty years, and Miles isn't even a thing in the yeah. other Spider-Man universe. Miles is only right? what, like twelve years old. He's only twelve years like, old in terms yeah. of like comic book years and everything like that. So he wasn't even a thing, right? There are other universes where Venom attached to obviously Peter, but then attached to Eddie Brock. But then there are other universes where instead of Eddie Brock, he attaches the Flash or, you know, he just yep. all this stuff, right? Flash Thompson isn't even, he's only mentioned in these games. He's not even shown, right? Well, even then, so. like, too, you find out, you know, originally the whole story was like, oh, well, Venom, the symbiote gets Peter's powers because... Uh, that was the first uh, human he bonded to, so it took, right. you know, took it, his it, powers. It, it, and then, it took inspiration from his powers and everything. But Yeah, in this and then game, later they retconned it that we're, the reason the symbiote's so crazy is because it first actually attached to Deadpool, and then it got the <laughs> hell out of there because Deadpool was too crazy for it. It actually yep. drove the symbiote crazy, right? And then it's all of its offspring were crazy. It's all, like it, it's comics and, and Marvel stuff is like so convoluted. Don't get caught up on like Venom's not weak to fire. No one cares. Like no one cares. Next ne next year, there's gonna be some comic release where Venom is not even you know weak to sound. It's gonna be like he's weak to water, but it's like half water, half ice or something. Oh god! Right? He's, he's, he's weak to soy sauce. Yeah, he's, he's for something. whatever reason, it's just, it's just it's gonna happen. So yeah, that that was just weird. But overall, I 
100. I enjoyed Venom. His voice, his voice actually was odd. That that scene, to Tony when, Todd killed. Yeah, yeah. When 100%. he, so my favorite scene personally for Venom is when you go back to uh, the house and MJ is sitting yeah. there with oh, Harry, yeah. and Harry's like, "You're looking a little tense, man. You want some coffee?" And you know, Venom's little arm comes out and pours the coffee and everything like that. And then Peter Gross. says the thing that pisses him off even more. We gotta get that thing off of you. Yeah. And Harry smashes the table and he's like, we're not a thing. And then he goes in, from Harry's voice into Venom's voice going, we are And I was like, yeah. dude, and, yes! It's so and that's good. the line for Venom. Every you know, every yeah. iteration of Venom has yeah. the we are Venom. We because are that's Venom the whole line. thing about Venom. Dude, is that it's it. The, yeah, the, the symbiote bonding to the host, like that's what makes Venom, right? Yep. So, uh, yeah, Tony Todd's, you know, it starts with, it's like you said, it starts with Harry. He's like, we are. And he's like, Venom. And it's like, yeah. holy shit. Like, yeah. that was just like meaty. Like, he went for it and it was great. It was. It absolutely was amazing. So. Speaking of which, while we're on the topic of the house, yes. uh, did anyone else not see the curveball of Mary Jane becoming Scream? Uh, coming at all. I didn't see that shit happening I, at all. Oh. Okay, so when that happened, I'll, Lethal, go ahead and talk here in a second, but when I saw that happen, I originally thought we were going to get, so when she started to get corrupted and everything, I'm thinking like, well, are we about to get either she Venom or are we about to get like, um, I know there's been other iterations where Mary Jane has the symbiote on her, but she looks more like carnage essentially. Like she's all, she's nothing but red essentially. I thought we were going to see that. And the next thing you know, scream. And I was like, oh, damn. Okay. Lethal, go. No, yeah. I was, I was just going to say, I remember seeing like that version of Venom or whatever. Again, I have no idea who Scream is. Like you're talking about someone who doesn't really know like the comic books and doesn't know too much about Venom. So for me, yeah. I was like, oh, I've definitely have seen like that, that, that kind of Venom character before. Um, but I didn't think it was like from MJ. And so when I found out like it's not, I, I don't think it's normally from MJ, like in the comic books or anything like that. I thought that was such a cool way to kind of incorporate that Venom character, but like I didn't even think about it, but it kind of makes sense for like if like if Venom or if uh, MJ were to become like one with Venom, how she would look like that character. So I just go, it goes back to the fact that like I really love the way that they did Venom in this game and how creative they were um, with just utilizing Venom and just utilizing the symbiote in general. So like that to me was yeah. such a cool moment where I was like, no, for a second I was like, bro, wait, is she actually like that Venom character? Like was that canon? Like is that normally how that is? Uh, but no, that was a very cool twist and then a very cool boss fight. And then you get to see like her have like those like uh, those moments with Peter, right? About like her complaining. I, I forget word for word of what they were saying, but like this, this game does a really good job of having some really, really good dialogue in those boss fights. The, those boss fights have dialogue, actually some really yes. good boss fights. Yeah. Yes, they have yeah. absolutely and, stellar and, and, and dialogue. I, I can't remember. I don't know if you remember, but like I just remember there being lots of good moments, like especially with her as like the Venom suit, right? Where she's like talking about how I, I, I can't remember if it's like, if, it, if it's like, a, I think it was like a thing of like protection or something like that. I, I, I can't exactly remember what it was, but it's, again, it's just, it's another whole point of just the fact that like, when you see these characters become one with the symbiote, right? Like those, there's a lot of good dialogue options of like how it's affecting them and like, you know, what is like their main issue. But well, like Peter wanted to have like yeah, so a I better mean, suit to protect everybody. And like, you know, it, it, right. it was cool, right? And with Harry, with the whole thing of like wanting to heal the world and stuff like that. And so it's like, MJ yeah. had her moment it, with it too. But go ahead, yeah. Right, well, it brings it brings out, you know, your inner, you know, feelings on certain things. Obviously it amplifies it and right. twists it in some ways, but it does, in so, it, there is some truth to the things that are being said. I mean, one of my personal, you know, discussions or uh, conversations, if you want to call it that, during any boss fight was Miles versus Peter in the black suit. Hell that yeah. was amazing. That yeah. hit hard, man. That, was so yeah. good. that hit hard. Um, but it was Peter, but you could tell there was some truth to it where Peter was like, this suit is making things better because I'm able to, you know, take people down faster. I'm able to do this and that and to some, you know, especially when you then go into his mind and you, before the anti-venom suit is obtained, right? And you see what is in his head about like, yeah, he does all this. He's been doing this for 10 plus years and a lot of Spider-Men across the uni multiverse have dealt with this where no matter what they do, like it's at, at some point you're just like, what's the point of doing this anymore, right? Like no matter what I do, things keep getting worse and worse. And now you have this thing that could potentially make it a little bit easier for you, right? Um, which obviously is supposed to be the whole lesson thing where you fight against it and yada yada, typical Spider-Man stuff. 
but that's what we got to see. So with the Scream slash Mary Jane boss fight, you see here going like, I'm always putting my, you know, my passions, my wants on the back burner to protect your seeker, to make sure that you can do this thing because you can't hold down a job and everything like that. Yeah. While obviously amplified and everything, there is some truth to that. Spider-Man gets in the way, and we even see this at the very beginning of the game. Yeah, where he's he trying loses to his job. Yep. Right? And, and then it's like, but then Sandman attacks. It's like, dude, like, yeah, like, Miles is going to get a slap on the wrist, you know, because his mom can cut for form. He's in high school. <gasps> Peter loses a job. You th and, then, and then, dude, that hit even harder when you go into the house for the first time and you see the mortgage bill. And you're just like, yeah. It, yeah. Let's talk mm. about that because that was the most shocking thing in the game. Yeah. Wow. I was like, you're in, you're in Queens. And you're paying a uh, forty-five hundred dollar a month, uh, and I was like, you know what? That's probably realistic, though. Like yeah. to be fair, today, like yeah, you, that would be your mortgage. Like yeah. yeah, if you if you because if you think about it, like now, do you okay? Yeah, she she remortgaged, uh, and this is, you know, remember this game is taking place. Let's say the first one took place in uh, two thousand eighteen, mm -hmm. right? That's the real time. And then Miles took place in like two thousand nineteen, and it's like twenty twenty. Yeah, the rates yep. at that point, you know, the interest rates were <laughs> getting to be ridiculous. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, that actually makes sense. But that, man, I was painful to see. I was like, it was. Yeah, that's, but, that's real. But that's again, the, that's through, welcome to America, Pete. Yeah. But then, you know? that, but then you see that as that it, it's, it's a good conclusion to where we get to the end of the story where Peter's going to take a small break as being Spider Man. He's not quitting, he's not completely yeah. done or anything. But he's going to take a break because, hey, you have Miles here who literally tells him, Pete, I got this, right? Like, let me do some of this stuff right now, which obviously then they can take into, you know, however farther down the long, we'll get into Spider-Man three talks later, but you know, talking about where, you know, he's in, let's just say, for example, his junior year of high, college, for example, right? And he, now he's starting to deal with the stuff that Peter especially has had to deal with all on his own for a while, but maybe Peter's been able to get the, you know, the foundation stuff back up and running and he can do a lot from you know working from home and everything and then being spider-man becomes easier again and he can slowly help miles out you go again we'll get into spider-man 3 talk but they it's it's a constant thing through the main story peter gets fired from a job that he really was passionate about and really looking forward to because again spider-man gets in the way the suit comes in makes it feel like he could it just could finally make things a little bit easier and better for him obviously twists and turns it and then finally at the end he gets that break that you know, I, I've seen a lot of people not so happy that thinking that he's quit or something, but it, it allows him to finally get that break that, you know, in the end, he kind of deserves. And, you know, regardless of what you think, I mean, even if you do cut things like read the comics from 616 universe, the main universe and everything, a lot of critiques are not seeing Peter grow up and everything or finally get somewhat of a decent life. And it's kind of their way of doing that, in my personal opinion. So I personally love it. Yeah, I thought... I thought the resolution was was really good, right? We see that the the suit has to be taken off of Harry. Um, you know, basically they save they save his life technically. He's still alive. Yeah, I mean, I mean they ha you know they they so, sort sort of, of. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, that's that's the main um, the main thing that I really uh, liked was the the kind of I don't I don't remember if it was the post credits or what whatever, but where like you see Harry did survive, right? And he's in a coma. Uh, Peter and Mary Jane are there, and Norman's there. And Norman starts freaking out, so Peter and Mary Jane leave. Um, and then, you know, Norman's like, give me the G serum, right? We all know what that means. Goblin, if baby! If, yeah, mm -hmm. if you're a Spider-Man fan, you know what that means, right? The Green Goblin is coming. So what I'm predicting is going to happen is he's going to give him the serum. It's going to work. Uh, Harry's going to be the Hobgoblin. Norman's going to take it because Peter's going to hurt hobgoblin taking him out so norman's gonna take the serum and then become the green goblin and that's gonna be the big showdown that'd, that'd be that'd be a uh, twist that'd be a twister because usually it's green goblin first and yeah. then you get hobgoblin later on so. but with like everything we've seen with this right it, it all comes back to norman trying to protect harry right, right. every time mm -hmm. right and he even goes at the end he talks to octavius and he's like you know, I they hurt my this, son. Yeah, yeah, I need to know who the, the Spider-Men are. You know who they are. I need to know who they are. And Octavius goes, screw you, man. Sorry. Not <laughs> happening. Right? Um, and it's... it's. Uh, I, I think that's really cool. But that that's how I see it playing out. Is that Harry's going to get better, but he's going to go crazy. 
uh, that he's going to have the tech to play around with. And then eventually Norman is going to end up uh, to avenge him becoming the Green Goblin. Um, and yeah, you're right. It's normally Hob, uh, Green Goblin. Then Hobgoblin follows up, it's like stealing Norman's tech down the line. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be or, Harry first. Right. And then Norman is going to be the big the big bad. Because, I mean, they've just been building up. They've, to they've been building Norman up to be him. the big bad. Yeah. Yeah, the entire time. Like in the first game, you find the helmet and the glider. And the second one, he says, bring the G serum. Yeah. Right. Pretty obvious. I, I think I think it's similar to that, but I don't think it's going to be Norman. I think it's going to come back to Otto. I think they're going to pull a three, like a, a full, like uh, kind of like a 360, right? 180, I guess. One of the two. They're going to make Otto I, I think the I think, Green I think, Goblin? I think they're going to do that. They, they wow. can't. They no, 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 no. Sorry. Not making the Green Goblin, but you were saying like the big bad. I'm saying no, it's going to come back to Otto being the big bad again. Oh. It's going oh, that, that, okay. to. To me, that, okay. to me, that's like a perfect like right back to the first game right to the whole thing with Otto. Well, i feel like that he would yeah. be the big bad in terms of the big bad that's sorry that's what i'm gaming towards i i what i see is what they're likely going to do with Otto is they're going to do a superior spider-man thing right oh uh, like, please don't no uh, please like, don't I, no that's, that's the only way i see yeah, it happening i have no man. idea what that means what is that what does that mean uh, so, okay so, so it, quick quick thing for anyone uh, who doesn't know superior spider-man yeah, i won't me. get into that's me. full lore or anything but the that's main me. I don't know nothing. premise <laughs> is that the main premise is that Otto, you know, he's in a dying body and he basically swaps minds with Peter. He becomes Peter Parker. He becomes Spider-Man and everything. And Peter is stuck in his decaying body and through things and all this kind of stuff. Otto actually starts to make Peter's life better and everything. Um, but he, yeah, there's, a, there's a point where he then gives his body back, essentially, and then Peter has to deal with the consequences of what happened and everything. It was it was a way to reset in some ways during the comics for six one six and everything like that. So I personally hope they don't. But I'm seeing I already see the signs and everything because again, Otto in the games he's literally in a, in a body that can't you know he's, his mind still works but his body's not you know we saw from the first game and everything like that. I really hope they don't. Yeah. I really hope I, they don't. I, 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 I don't like think they're they, going to. I don't think they will just because I'm if I'm not mistaken. I remember the creative director. Uh, for this game, I could have sworn I remember him saying that like they want to try to make it like their own like take, right? They they want to do their I'm own like kind of stories. That. So yeah, like I, I don't think they'll copy it exactly like that, but I I personally do think that the, in the third game it is going to come back to like the big bad being Otto. So I, I could definitely uh I could definitely see it going see in more that. In that direction. I could easily see that. Yes, I absolutely could see that. So yeah, um, and, and I, yeah, I'm not saying like like what what I think is they're going to do a Superior Spider Man halfway through. Miles is going to figure out how to undo it, right? And then we'll get Peter back. Then Otto will be like, okay, he gets, he's going to get his arms back and then definitely be one of the... Or maybe the big, they throw the a twist bats. and they do Superior Spider-Man, but Miles gets taken over. You know, oh, that through. would actually and, be kind of rad. And then, like, and then that forces Peter to come back and be like, okay... He definitely needs my help now because he starts yeah. to see the signs of and everything like that, right? Yeah, so. it could be that. Yeah, like, like I mean, you know, one of the cool things is like in, in Superior Spider-Man that everyone always references, and I always thought it was it was a fun thing, is that like you know, uh, Otto has Peter's body and he fights a scorpion and he literally like knocks the scorpion's jaw off, like takes off half his face, right? Uh, because he because he goes, oh, I guess this kid was not even really fighting me all these years like, yeah, he didn't realize he, that and that, that he was like 10 oh, times stronger back the whole time like. yeah <laughs> yeah so he realized like oh peter was not killing me on purpose the entire time like yeah uh, he could have easily just knocked my head in like caved my yeah. skull in uh <laughs> but he didn't thank you peter right like uh <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he realized like, oh, I can't, uh, I can't just do that because then people are just gonna think that I've gone crazy. Uh, but yeah, people go like, oh, he, he, killed, he straight up just murdered the scorpion, right? <laughs> like, I think yeah. the scorpion dies of that because it just r literally just tears the bottom half of well, his face. Well, they don't off. have to worry about that because isn't like half the Sinner Sinister Six like dead thanks to Craven? So uh, I believe technically just a, two thirds of the Sinister just, Six are dead. Just about. Yeah, yeah. Ry so. Rhino, Rhino's dead. Scorpion's dead. Vulture's dead. Um, shocker, shocker still, no, shocker shocker's dead. dead. Shocker's yeah, dead. Yep. dead. Um, yeah. Mr. Negative's still alive, obviously. Otto's still alive. 
and that was that was it. That was it. it. Yeah. So two, Ry- two thirds Rhino of the, wasn't in the game, but I guess someone glitched out and someone found glitched his... into the, another area that might be a DLC yeah. later down the road. And yeah, Rhino's head is on a his statue. His head is on oh, a wall. Really? Yeah. Oh damn! See, I didn't even yeah. know that. That's actually crazy. I was wondering. I was like, wait, did yeah. Rhino was Rhino confirmed dead? I even I didn't know that. Because well, Rhino yeah. Rhino was a big thing in the Miles game. Right. 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 Um, yeah. And then we didn't hear from him. And then well. <laughs> now we know where he is. Now right. we know why. Any, any chance uh, you guys think Mysterio switches? I, uh, I, I actually you think, you th- you think I, a I good mean, conversation the- with Otto would uh, switch him back. I know he's like reformed. He's part of like the reformed villain crew. I call them like Tombstone. I don't know. Of them. I would actually. I don't know if that I particular like, Mysterio will. I think if someone will take up the mantle. I think. Yeah, because that's basically what happened in this game, right? Mm-hmm. The two his two assistants yep. like basically did all the Mysterio stuff, which is very. Cool. I love that resolution. Because, yeah. like, I was thinking, like, oh, this is going to be super lame if it's just, like, oh, Mysterio's actually being a bad right. guy. Like, yeah. and then you find out, like, they, t- and I was like, okay, that was a good way to spin that. Like, I was really happy with that. And especially that it involved Miles over Peter, right? Like, yes. you yes. got to see Mysterio through a new lens, right? Through Miles. And the Mysterio boss fight at the end oh, come was on. just rad. That was so like, sick, that was, dude. It was the so snow good. Globe, like, snow globe yeah. boss fight. Come and on. I was like, this is the spectacle. That's like, it's just mm-hmm. awesome, right? The only yeah. thing that was like more, like, literally, like more spectacular than that was, um, was the Bahamut fight, in my opinion, right? Like, that fight was the most spectacular fight from Final Fantasy 16 uh, the entire year, in my opinion, right? Mm-hmm. Just of, of it being just this grandiose, huge, epic event of a fight, right? Um, but the Mysterio one was like really up there too, and I it thought was, that was, was very cool. cool. Stay, staying on that I topic, mean, if we're talking about okay, Mysterio, yep, go ahead. there you oh, go. God. No, you're gonna go same where I think I was gonna go. Go ahead. Oh, okay, well, I mean, so speaking of the Mysterio, because that was all with Miles and everything, you'd only do that mm-hmm. stuff with Miles. You yes. also have to talk about the flame yes. mission that you got to do, yep. and I. This is one thing I really wish they had actually done a little bit more on was having Yuri in the story a little bit. I liked her character from the first game, and obviously, if you played the DLC from the first game. You know that she needed to take some time off after that particular <laughs> DLC and everything, right? She did. So, what she did, and now she's Wraith, essentially, right? So, yes. to see her was, honestly, I personally loved that. I, I've always loved the banter between her and Spider-Man. You know, I love that they brought back the line of Spider-Cop you know, for yeah, the first game. I absolutely cool. love that, right? And but I, then yeah, we got I, to see Cassidy. You know, they, they kept calling him yes. the flame the entire time, but it's like, yeah, come on, we... They, they, they literally at the at the end where Peter's being crushed by a train, right? He's just like, "There'll be flames, there'll be something, there'll be carnage," and I was like, "Yep, yep, they went there." Yeah. Yep, yeah. <laughs> so uh, as soon as as soon as they revealed that he was after the suit, or I was after the, the, the symbiote. This, the symbiote, yeah, right. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, carnage, I know who this carnage." Yep, is. right. Yeah, because yep. I was like, I was like, who? Like, did, did they just make up a fucking villain? Like, did they just, like, it's just random ass, red haired fuck? I, I was like, thinking the same thing. I was like, is he just, like, this flame leader, cult leader, or whatever? Like, that's just what yeah, he was. Yeah, and I was like, it's a weird story. Like, and I haven't kept up, right, uh, with, with Marvel in the last, like, 10 years or so. I've been really bad about keeping up with the new storylines and things like that. Um, but I don't ever remember, like, I mean. If you consider like Maximum Carnage, like the OG, like Carnage storylines and stuff, he does form like a little, little mini cult that follows him, right? With like uh, I forget Shriek and Doppelganger and um, them, where they they kind of treat him as like a cult leader. But I don't ever remember him like being the straight up like Charles Manson cult leader like this, right? Uh, and I just kept thinking, like, who the hell is this character supposed to be? Like, I just don't, I didn't. And then once it got to, like, it revealed that he was after the symbiote. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> way. Oh. I was like, no <laughs> way. Like, I was like, red hair, dude is completely crazy. Yeah. He's after the symbiote. And then, you know, when he does it, he's like, oh, and cause carnage. And I was like, ah, oh. right? Like, I, you I know, was like, it, it's funny because when, when I originally played that mission, right? Like, and you saw him on the screen talking with Yuri and everything, I'm sitting here going, okay, who is this guy? Like, in, yeah. but then the moment, again, we find out who he is and what he's, why he wants to, the symbiote and everything, it's so obvious. But in yes. that moment, you're kind of thinking, like, so, like, because all I kept thinking was, fire red flame dude like is there some kind of flame bad guy that spider-man's known for fighting a bunch of times like i yeah. can think of some dc comic guys but marvel is like flames it's very specific to spider-man i'm like 
are they making like a new villain? Like, I'm all here for it. I'm all for it. And then is this Johnny Storm? Yeah, like and then <laughs> drops and then drops the whole Carnage line. I was like, ah, yeah, there we go. And Carnage is just like, like I love Carnage as a kid. Like I, I love Venom, you know, because like mm-hmm. I'm a '90s kid. But Carnage is just like so good as a villain, right? It's it's yeah. like the Joker, right? Yeah, where he's just he's just there to fuck everyone's day up. Like that's yep. he has no other purpose than to just like Venom has his like vendetta against Peter Parker and against Spider Man, like Norman doesn't like Spider Man because he hurt his son or whatever, like or you know, and then in like Car- in the movie, Carnage doesn't so, give an f who yeah, you Carnage are. is just like just I'm like, here to f kill up. people <laughs> and uh, like I'm here to burn down buildings and kill people and just cause mayhem. And he's, he's literally like like Spider Man's Joker, and I love yep. Carnage so much, and I was so excited to see that. And I was like, I wanted Somniac to do good with that character. Please give us yep. DLC. I think. Uh, well, okay. Well, so the question is, do you think they're going to deal do DLC for him, or do you think that he's going to be in the third game, or whatever next game comes? I, I think DLC. I think I think, think they, I, I think they're going to want to tie up all the symbiote stuff in this game. I mean, maybe yeah, maybe it'll I be do, the third game, I but too. I really feel like they just want to do all symbiote for this game. Yeah. I, I think I think we're gonna see like like this. The, remember the whole city that never sleeps pack was like, you know, they were like separate DLCs that had little, little storylines. But there was a through line mm-hmm. to that set of DLC, and I think they were setting that up when he gets away with the symbiote. That that the rest that. of yeah. the DLC is gonna be like, hey, we're gonna figure out how to get that guy under control now that is a shame because i do think carnage is such a great villain that he could like he could just be the big bad of his own game easy right or or he's like in the background through most of the third game like with all the hobgoblin goblin stuff and what other stuff like he is he but he's he's you like you know he's there right yes he's messing stuff up he's you know maybe he's the reason that uh you know, Harry then officially dies, and then Norman goes full on crazy. You know, G serum, all that stuff. You know, he could be the the person pushing all those buttons, essentially, right? But there's, there's so many different things you can do with them. But yeah, I definitely see it. It'd either be a DLC or in the next game. I mean, I'd be okay with either, personally. Yeah, with a DLC, like you know, City That Never Sleeps ended up being what, like 12, 15 hours. Something like that, yeah. It's, it was so, a yeah, good amount. It's yeah. a good amount. There was, good there amount was what, there was what three parts, like maybe like four hours each. So like three, yeah, four hours three each. parts yeah. that were like three to four hours each, plus the side, <laughs> little side stuff you could do in mm-hmm. them that were added across the map. Yeah. Uh, you do that well enough, and do that with Carnage as like the center thread to all of it, right? That like maybe for like right because like remember, City Never Sleeps had like Black Cat first, right? It was now Black she, Cat, then it was the Hammerhead slash Yuri stuff, and then it was the Hammerhead and Sable. And thinking. Sable, yeah, right? And then Yuri at the end, like, you know, tries to kill him. Spoilers for a five-year-old game, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it's already on so, PC and all that it's stuff. It's on so. PC. Oh, one of these days, I'm going to get that to play on the Ultra one. I think that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, like, I really think that they did a great job in this game of just, like, leaving that thread open, right? Because everything else is pretty well... It's all wrapped up. tied up and wrapped. Yeah, it's all wrapped yeah. up for the most part. Except like for Harry's that. in a coma. Like yeah. you know, he's gonna come back next time. And, yeah. Uh, or at the very minimum, Norman would. You know, the Green Goblin and all that stuff. They've been setting that up. Yeah. Um, but Spider Man's on his break now. Miles is. You know, I guess we can talk about that now. Miles is the main Spider Man, and even developers from Insomniac have come out and said, like, no, Miles is the main. They use quotes, main Spider Man for this universe right now. Um, which again makes sense based on the ending and everything. But I think what we need to say though, real quick, is this does not mean that Peter has stopped being Spider Man for good. He's not quitting forever. They literally say in the game, hey, go take a break, be Peter Parker for a while. I'll call you up if I need really big help, essentially. Right? He's like, hey, I'll call you for advice, or, you know, if something really big happens, then, you know, obviously come help me. But, you know, I've got yeah. this right now like, i've got this and again if they do have to you know it, it's kind of spelling it out but if they do do the um a dr octavius taking over a spider-man's body i think it'd be a cool twist take over miles body and that's when peter's like you're not being you something's going on and then he returns right so yeah, yeah. Um, but make it a few years in the future just saying don't do like nine months do do like a few years into the future that, that's all i'm gonna 
for the game's release or you mean like for the storyline the, the storyline oh, okay. obviously take as much time as you need for right, whatever right. next game comes out but in terms oh, yeah, of the yeah, storyline yeah. for whatever whenever it starts make it a few years make it got a few you, years. Got you. you know uh peter has truly been able to do the things with the, the company that he wants to make and all that stuff really make a living and all that stuff uh miles is you know again junior in college maybe or something like that um yeah give it a few years in universe time I would say. yeah the only thing i was going to add to that is that um i just you know i i agree with everything you pretty much just said and i think for me the big thing is that like i, I know a lot of people are jumping to the conclusion that like oh like you're just like peter is like 100 done and like i just want to reiterate the same fact that you make because like i i just don't see that happening especially especially if norman's going to be the big bad as a green goblin there's yeah, no way you there's no way you yeah. don't have a peter in that storyline like that's yeah you that's, cannot that's, have a norman osborne like story without exactly peter. and it's it's so it's he that's such a big that's still like a big moment like i feel like you know don't expect at least for me like i'm not expecting you know peter to just be gone all of a sudden like i don't i don't see that happening for the third game at all I, I generally do think they worded it perfectly by saying like you know he needs to be Peter for a while. I they, don't be surprised if like the next game isn't even Spider-Man three, but it's going to be Spider-Man Miles Morales Part two or something, right? Like I, I yeah, wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I mean, like I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if we got something like that, and then it's like Spider-Man three. It's like oh now Peter's back, right? Peter was able to start up the foundation. Maybe he did way more with it. You know what I mean? Like I I can totally see something like that happening because yeah, he he has he has an actual life, you right, know, where right. he's able to make a living, have a place to live. Mary right. Jane's doing well with her podcast stuff or whatever she does next, obviously. And then something happens. It's like, okay, I got to go help with this because this is, uh, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> so, like, I mean, you, the, um, I can only, I can already see like how it's going to be with like, you know, Green Goblin coming in and like, you know, maybe announcing that he knows the identity of Spider-Man, right? Like, that's just so, yeah. that's so big. Like, I don't know. I, that's I, a Green Goblin thing to do anyway. Right. So, right. I mean. so like, I guess that's why my point is just to, you know, go on that whole thing is like, I can definitely see Miles. He's obviously being set to be the main Spider-Man, but there's just no way when that game comes with Spider-Man Three. There's just no way that Peter is not involved. Plus, and I think, mm -hmm. go ahead. I think a lot of people are. I've seen this a lot for some reason online, which I guess I can kind of see it, but not really. Is that coupled with a lot of people going like, "Oh man, they nerfed Spider-Man in this game and everything," and I'm like, they nerfed him. Uh, sure i guess he's still pretty powerful to me and if you're talking purely strength and everything like that maybe it's his willpower or something in terms of something that was done with the symbiote maybe it's that fall or maybe damage. they think or maybe they think that him taking a break is him giving up which is a non-spider-man thing to do i just don't see it personally plus again i've always been a big advocate of dude just let i, I know it's a spider-man thing but let peter have a little bit of a life like I'm like in terms of going off of the game and going to the new comic that's coming out in 2024, the old the new Ultimate Spider-Man where he's actually like has a family already and then he gets his spider powers. Like I'm looking forward to that. Finally, a grown-up Peter Parker doesn't have a perfect life by any means, but has a life and as things have some some things have gone well for him. I'm looking forward to seeing like that, and I hope that they do something like that continuing on in this universe and everything. But I don't know. I just find that weird when people are saying, like, they nerfed him and everything. I'm like, did? Okay, sure. Do you guys think we'll see in part three more MJ? More uh, MJ side missions? I'll tell you what. She definitely uh, didn't get a nerf. She got a buff. <laughs> <laughs> she got a buff. This game, she was she not a... nerfed. I can promise okay. you that. I, I will say for the for the Mary Jane missions, I, I like everybody. I didn't really enjoy them in the first game. They were just oh, the kind of whatever. 100%. I wanted to get through them real fast and everything. There are three. There are three in this game. Right, that's it. The first yep. one mm -hmm. is uh, sneaking around in the zoo area, which doesn't take that long. It took me less than five minutes to do. And it weaves yep. into the story because you literally show up right there, right? The second one is when the suit is controlling Peter because Peter's asleep, right? But it's not purely Mary Jane. It switches between Mary Jane and Miles going back and forth, right? And again, it works right there and it's not like you're doing this separately, and then it zips over to another side of the city for something happening. No, everything's happening right there. And then the third one is where she gets, you know, the basically a gun to just, just destroy all the symbiote, you know, people and everything like that. And it takes literally less than two minutes to complete. You walk through, you grab the meteorite, you blast a few of them, and you take off. That's it. So I don't, it was not big of a deal to me personally. I thought it was improved over from the first game, and then it was done. That was it. I'm like, okay, cool. I get to go back to doing exactly what I want to do, being Spider-Man. So, 
Yeah, I, th- I thought the Mary Jane. I mean, personally, I love the mix of gameplay in this game. Right, that's one of the things yeah. I don't think. Like we talked about the combat and the traversal, but like the mix of gameplay in this game was phenomenal. Right, mm. you had the you had the Mary Jane missions where it was just stealth, the first one, and then the next two she gets like the stun gun. Right, or no, she has a stun gun in the first one too, but she just it keeps what? getting upgraded. Right yeah, as it goes yeah. along. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's just like that was super fun. And then you had the parts where you're like you're uh, Peter sneaking through like the sewer, or Miles sneaking into a building. And then you have the the things where you're like the spider bot, and you have to do that. Yeah, those are thing. cool. The beam. Uh, I just thought like there's there's a ton of like variety and little stuff like that that kept the game really fresh. And even in the first game, like with the MJ missions, um, I never had a problem with them with those or Miles because I was like, well, these are powerless characters in a world where people have superpowers. So yeah, yeah. they got to like stealth like (laughs) it's their only option right uh to me that like i put myself in that like i go okay like and other people i get it like you go oh boy right i didn't have a problem with the the ragnarok like the the chill session where you ride around on the yak i was like okay this is like vibes for like an hour you know like (laughs) it is what it is i played that again recently i was like this was not as long as i thought it was the first time uh not that i had a problem with it but i was like it felt longer and then i did the second time i was like it's like 25 minutes like now that you, whole little now, now, section. Now, now I need to go back and play Ragnarok. I got it. Uh, it's, I it's love very, that it's section still very too. Good. The one Anchor Boda, right? I did too. Yeah, yeah. with Anchor Boda, I thought it was great, right? And I'm I'm cool if you go and give me like different variety of gameplay things like that. Like if you're gonna sit there and calm everything down and tell me a story and keep me engrossed, I'm down with that. Or if you're gonna make me feel powerless for a second in a game where I'm playing as like you know Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, who's like a, like a living god, right? Or two living gods. One of them can shoot like electricity and turn invisible. And the other has like mechanical arms that come out of him, right? Like, and then you go like, well, I don't want to have to play as like a powerless character for like ten minutes. That ruins the whole game for me. I, I, yeah. Never right, bothered I, me. I thought, right? like, like I said before, I think the Mary Jane sections again. There's only three of them, not that long, but it yeah. weaves. It, 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 at least for me, it weaves in to this main story nicer than it did in the first game person because again like i said yes every time the mary jane stuff happened or even the miles sneaking around stuff um like when he was he had to sneak around and rhino was there in that shipyard and everything like that was happening off just randomly over here and then it zoomed you back over to the other side of the city where you would continue the story right whereas yeah. in this game it starts kind of like that you're in this own what seems to be in your own area but then the story continues there. It swaps over to Spider-Man right then and there, right? And it just can, and it logically flows and everything like that. Again, because like when Mary Jane saves Kirk Connors, or at least opens the gate and everything, then he gets stabbed with the serum, starts to turn into the lizard and everything. But and then you have the Spider-Man fighting and everything, and then Mary Jane's trying to help move Kirk Connors up to the lab to try and get a serum at least. And then it swaps over to Spider-Man fighting, and then you see in the background. Uh, Kirk Connors turning into the lizard and everything like that. So I, I, yeah. I, that it, like it was way better woven together and everything in my first which made me not have a single problem with any of those missions. But I mean, just overall, I think I, again we all three platinum the game and everything like that. It's not particularly hard platinum, but we all did just because I, this is one of those games, and this is the reason I uh, just absolutely loved it is the fact that I literally sat down and played this game. Like I turned on my recording PC. I had OBS open and I had a uh, replay buffer button ready to go, hotkey ready to go, just capture everything. And I sat down and played that game for 19 hours straight. My fiance came home and looked at me and she's like, I knew you were going to be doing this, but I thought you'd at least be taking a break. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to keep playing. She's like, did you have dinner? I'm like, yeah, I had a slice of pizza or something like that. And I just kept playing and I played until four in the morning. And then I finally went to bed. And then when we wake up, she's like, what time did you come to bed? I was like, 4 a.m. So just look at I her. Just, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I, but the thing is, I wasn't doing that because I had to make content. Obviously, I needed to for this channel. But first and foremost, I just had a blast. There was no moment I had to just pause and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to turn the game off and, you know, either go through my footage, take a break. And everything. I was like, no, I got to keep playing. I want to keep playing. This is just fun. It's a yes. fun game. That, That's exactly I would what agree. It, it's just one of those games that pushed me to keep going. And yeah, I, I was like, I like, like I would turn it off because I had to get something done. Or I had to go somewhere, you know. Uh, and then when I get back, I'd be like, I want to play more. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and I it's... didn't. And after after that, I was just like, the only 
like again there are minor critiques and everything 100 you know are there for a reason and that's the reason some points got docked and everything perfectly fine but you know, a first world problem is just simply i want more <laughs> like that's all i want i just want more of this like just give me more of this Oh yeah, dude. dude the way uh, the way this game opens up for me too, it's like that was the Sandman. Uh, the whole Sandman section to me was just like dude, the music. Yeah, like like that. The whole thing with like Peter in the school. Like to me, like the moment that happened, dude. I was so sucked in. I was like, I was like, God damn it, this is gonna be an amazing game, isn't it? I was like, you, <laughs> like you just knew. You were like, oh my god, this this whole section here, this whole intro, and then just the way it introduces everything else. I I know I don't want to reiterate the same things that we've been kind of saying, but like from start to finish like this game just had me captivated dude the story was so good and i know we even touched upon it a little bit too of like some of the side content but for me it's like i think i loved every bit of side content like i know we even talk about like the collection of all the spider bots and stuff like that but like that cool little cameo with the whole spider verse thing like that was just so freaking cool like there was so like there was so much side content or at least for me not that there was so much but like all the bits of the side content was just I wanted to do everything. Like like Talon, I was pulling like 16 hour play sessions yeah. when I got back from vacation because like I was behind. Everybody had already played like for, like two days <laughs> and I came back that Sunday, dude. And oh my God, I, I played all day that Sunday going into Monday. I was like waking up like an hour later for work. Like I was pulling like crazy long uh, like play sessions, but oh, it's because I, this I game know, was amazing. I, when you came back, you were like, Oh my god! Don't talk to me. I I, I got it. Oh my god! Sorry, I got it. I left my family so quick. I was like, listen, guys, I, I had a great vacation, but I gotta go. Like, I got a whole package. <laughs> I got a package waiting for me. Um, but yeah, dude, from start to finish, the, I was sold. I was I was into it. There is not a single part. And shout out to the Venom part. That still is like one of the biggest highlights for me of this game. And, and biggest well, twist was the entire playing of Venom. Is so cool, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, playing as Venom was awesome. But yeah. you know, you bring up the whole Spider Bot thing, and it's like. You find out later that the, the developers of the game actually talked with the people making mm. the movies for the Into the Spider Verse and Across the Spider Verse and everything. And they're like, "Hey, if we did this, would this be kind of a cool thing to weave it in?" It's like, "Yeah, go ahead, by all <laughs> means, do it." And like half those Spider Bots are, you know, like Spider Man 2099 and the Gwen Spider Bot and all that stuff, right? And the, mm. the, the Spider Man, regardless of whether it's Peter or Miles, they make these little comments about it and everything. Like, like Miles, if you get the Spider Bot for. Um, four miles of the Spider-Verse, you know, movies and everything. He's like, don't tell anyone, you're my favorite. Like, you know, just makes those yeah, little yeah. comments and everything. Like that, you know, it's, it's those little details and everything, which are always really cool. Um, but yeah, I just absolutely, just, again, I want more. I want more and, and I want to point out too, that they did confirm that Spider-Man and uh, Wolverine, Insomniac, Spider-Man and Insomniac Wolverine oh, yeah, are universe. in the same universe. So same universe. I, I, will, yep. I, I will say, as much as we love all these little things, oh my God, all I'm saying is Spider-Man 3, the day that that comes, that there's, there's some serious, crazy potential. And if I'm not mistaken, even the creative director uh, for the game, I, I forget his last name, but I know it's like Brian, I think is his first name. Um, he even said that, like, if there's a way to describe the third game, you know, what they have so far in motion and, and plan, it's like end game. Yep. And I was like, oh, yep. yeah. I was like, yep. bro, I don't know what they're cooking, man. But like everything that's going I'm together, excited. these little pieces here nice. are creating probably one of my fav most like favorite like Marvel universes ever. Like the, what they're doing here with Insomniac is literally insane. Well, and the cool thing is that whatever team is working on Wolverine is not taking away from yeah. Spider-Man 3 or Spider-Man 2 is not taking away from Wolverine, right? Like they have yep. their own separate yeah, teams they, and they obviously they they're probably, teams. they're probably communicating and everything, you know, you know, lore wise and all that, you know, helping each other with certain things, but yeah. And I'm sure are, they're working with Marvel too, because yeah, they, too. they, yeah. they talk to Marvel about, Hey, what source material is okay to use? What is not okay to use? Speaking um, of Marvel real quick, I did see a few critiques about that saying like they, you know, if people wish they'd gone extra crazy with certain things and everything. I'm like, yeah, that would have been cool. But you also have to keep in mind that Marvel gets final say on a lot of this stuff. So it can't go too crazy. Yeah. Because it that, is that, a property that they're working on. Yes. Like if they try to go too crazy, they like, they'd be like, no, especially yeah. like Spider-Man, right? Like, yeah. One of the things is like. You know, Peter, when Peter throws someone off of a roof, he like yeah. throws a little thing on them that yeah. webs him to but the it, building. Yeah, right? yeah, you, I, I still do that to this game all the time where I'll kick someone off the roof and I'll literally just aim the camera, like I'm looking over and be like, ah, joint just onto the wall, right? Like I see that all the time. But I always I find it weird how people were like, you know, oh, you can see the plot twist for, for some of these things coming a mile away. And I'm like, yeah, you could see it from the first game too. Like Otto Octavius, the moment you started the game, like, mm -hmm. yeah, huh? I wonder who Otto Octavius is going to become. Oh, right. 
<laughs> like so it's like like i get it, i get it right it's it's a fair criticism if you if you don't particularly like that but don't criticize the second game for seeing a, a plot point a mile away when the first game literally had that exact same thing right like it's it's spider-man if you know spider-man you probably know 90 percent of the stuff that's going to happen like it's just it's just a fact but overall i think again we could we've been going for almost an hour with this recording now we all love the game we want more of it and we can't wait to see what's going to happen with both spider-man 3 or maybe they do a miles part 2 game before 3 and how they maybe potentially uh bring in wolverine a little bit after his game i will say for wolverine don't bring spider-man into the first wolverine game if you want to make a quick name notice fine but don't bring any amount of spider-man like label stuff into his game have wolverine have his own game and then in three you know bring wolverine I, I am torn. One thing I will say is I am torn because I, I want to see I want to see Wolverine succeed and I want to see like if they're going to tie it together with like loose connections and whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And I also want like Insomniac to be free to do whatever. But at the same time, if like Insomniac goes, you know what? We're making like the the um, MCU of video games. I'm down. You know, like I'm down. Like you guys have done so great with Spider-Man so far. If you can keep that quality up and really get to the point where they go, yeah, we're going to give you guys like the advent, the Avengers, like go nuts. <laughs> um, Speaking well, of which, yeah. And it's pretty clear. I think that Insomnia is a pretty big team now so that if there are people working on those games who don't want to do Marvel anymore, because I have seen people be like, let them do their own thing. We don't need to see more Marvel games. It's That's like, what I'm let, saying. Like, right. Let, let, let the team who wants to do more Marvel stuff, let them keep doing that. That's really fine. They clearly can do it. Right, yeah. obviously, still giving them the time and everything, and then whoever doesn't want to work on that Marvel stuff, go off and do other things, right? You know, Ratchet and Clank or just their own new IP or whatever the case is, right? Let them do that, and I think mm-hmm. they'll be fi- they'll be allowed to do that, no problem. And the team has proven themselves time and time again; they'll be allowed to do that kind of stuff, and I'm all for it. I, I wanted to give a, a thank you to Insomniac and Marvel for also doing the cool little because uh, you guys mentioned Avengers, and it, it reminded me of the I think it was the Sanctum. From uh, in this game, oh the, the, oh, yeah, yeah. the, the whole thing with, uh, with Wong, yeah. I just wanted Wong, to say, yeah. well, first Dude, of all, so first popular. of all, that, that whole section with Black Hat was fantastic, and the way she yeah, was using the portals, incredible. that was just so that was cool. 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 And how they got that from the Ratchet and Clank again, amazing, amazing, yeah, amazing. Call back to Ratchet and yeah, Clank, all that yes, stuff, amazing. And it was. But I just want to say them adding in the Sanctum because, like, for a while we were like, oh, cool, they added the Avengers Tower, but like nothing happened. But then, like, stepping it up a bit, but like not doing anything crazy, but like just how they incorporated the Sanctum, and then you know the whole little like reference of Wong and everything. I was like, dude. That's awesome. That was a little so note cool. from Wong at the end. Yeah. Because yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about is because yeah, imagine they do that and they go, you know what? After Wolverine, before the next Spider-Man, we're gonna do Doctor Strange. Imagine, right? <laughs> like that could be super cool, right? And like I like I said, I'm I'm with Talon and all that stuff. Like like I don't want people to work on stuff they don't want to work on because that makes bad games. It does, yep. right? Look okay. at okay. like Redfall, right? Um, the Arcane did not want to work on that, and it ended up being real. Just terrible. What are you talking about? They're going to support that game for ten more years. They'll be lucky if they support it for ten more days, Talon. Like, let's <laughs> be real here. Um, that game is ooh. Uh, but like, yeah, we don't want people just working on stuff like to feed the machine, right? But if right. there are teams that are like, we love doing this Marvel stuff. And like, what will Marvel let us make? Can we can we come up with a fun story for Doctor Strange? Can we come up with a fun story for Daredevil, right? And then oh, yeah. you can work in like Daredevil, oh like God. make a Daredevil. That's like, like, like imagine Daredevil yeah. DLC. We didn't even talk about that. Imagine yeah. Daredevil is, is like Sifu, right? Like imagine they make a Daredevil, oh. like a grand scale Sifu, right? Where it's, it's hardcore martial arts and you have to use like the echolocation stuff. Like that'd be so cool, yeah, right? I or Doctor wait. Strange where... Yeah, right? Like, I would love to see stuff like that. And then if they can, at the end, like, weave it all together that they, all these people have to come to New York and, like, work out this galactic threat, like, that'd be super rad. Now, do I need Insomniac to do that? No. If they did that, though, I would be on board. Oh, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's just how I look at it personally. Um, but, yes, that seemed... I, like, I love the note from Wong. Yeah. Right yeah, at the that end. Was that, I that was a it. cool little note. It was awesome. Yeah. I, I was like, man... Like, I love... And I love, too, when... Um, it just it literally reminded me of Rift Apart, like the animation where Miles goes oh, through yeah, into the snow. Yo, so like, yeah, yeah, so like Antarctica. Antarctica. I was like, what yeah, is going yeah. on? And I was like, yo, this and is it was so cool. Rad. Yeah. That was no. so rad. And he like he flew through, right? And uh I was like, that is just so cool. 
right? And because it, it, I think I think they took inspiration from that the rift apart. that the rift apart oh, they like animation they definitely did where he yeah, where yeah, he falls soon his arms did. are going right like mm-hmm. and he's yeah. kicking like, and I was like yeah it's it's just that's great and that's it's, a little callback and a nod it's, to anyone it's another and it's just another team that has shown that they can utilize the power of PlayStation Five itself yeah. and just they they know what they're doing and they've established themselves as one of you know. Sony bought them for a bargain, and that is oh, yes. paid off in uh, yeah. dividends. That is literally like, the best yeah. deal anyone has ever made in gaming. Um, yeah. They've they've made Sony probably what like one point two, one point three billion dollars, something like that, uh, yeah. for for a two hundred billion dollar. Wasn't it? It was like two hundred million. Right? It was only two hundred. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I something like that. And, 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 you know, it, it was, made it's two, it's like two hundred million. Times, you know <laughs> what they yeah, what they were for. Right. Like, in in the in the year of twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three of seven point nine three point. Six billion and sixty-nine point billion dollars, or whatever. Insomniac was like, "Yeah, we'll get you for two hundred And then, uh, now they've definitely gotten that investment back. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, now they're using that to pay off the real shitty investment in Bungie, I guess. Yeah, but, seriously, uh, geez, that's, yeah. that's one of those things. Check that, check that video out in the top right corner, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, it's a sad time. But yeah, like overall, I I would say Spider Man was fantastic. I know Talon, was you you loved it. Lethal, yep. you loved it. We all platinumed it. It right? was it like, was it was spectacular. I don't so, have a lot of platinum. I don't because yeah. I don't platinum things very often. I don't. Like, yeah, I, I, I've, I haven't really like platinum games in a long time. But this yeah. game, I was just like, you know what? Like when I finally got everything done, I was like, oh, I'm ninety two percent done. Yeah, Might as well go same. for it. <laughs> I fin- I finished I finished like all the main story, all the side quests and stuff, and it was like yeah, it was like I had like three or four, and I was like, might as well do them, you know? Might as well do them. Yep, might as well get it. That's and nice. Lethal was gonna platinum it anyway. Yeah, so. I'm sorry, I was platinum. I was platinum <laughs> it for sure because I had it to. I had to have it match like you know uh, what's it called Spider Man One and then the Miles Morales. So I had to do it, but I mean. Again, the, to me, this is like a prime example of a fun platinum. I mean, there's games that I've done where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this is a chore. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. there's definitely been games that are like that. So for me, it's like this is the ideal platinum. This is how you make it like, you know, this is how you make the platinum experience fun, in my opinion. Like, perfect example. Mm. Perfect example. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. 100% agree. All right, guys. So we've been here for over an hour, though. We could keep going on and on, but I think you guys get the idea. But now we want to know your thoughts down below in the comments. What are your personal thoughts on Spider-Man 2? Which one game do you prefer? Do you prefer the first one? Do you prefer the Miles game? Or do you prefer Spider-Man 2? And what do you want for Spider-Man 3 going forward? You know, what, what kind of story beats do you want to see? What kind of things do you want to see them change? All that fun stuff. Let us know all your thoughts them in the comments. But anyway, everyone, I've been Talon with Direct Gaming. Joined again by Bobby and Lethal as our awesome trio team here. And until next time, everyone, we'll see you all in the next one. Johnny.